Star Wars Battlefront 2 from 2005 is a very appreciated game. I know that's a bold statement. I know this may be the first time that you're hearing people love this game. But believe me, it is true. And I too love this game very much. What I want to focus on in this video is the out of bounds areas that surround each map. I wouldn't call them secret areas because there's nothing really there. They're sort of just like blank canvas. Now these areas are empty and I am going to talk a little bit about the feeling of loneliness that they evoke within me. I know if you are rolling your eyes at another YouTuber talking about loneliness and nostalgia and emptiness, I get it. I'm rolling my eyes at myself too. Um, but obviously I'm going to say it anyway because these are true feelings and um, as I said, I, I, I like this game very much and having played it so much, trying these things that aren't exactly playing the game. And yes, I do say these areas evoke a feeling of emptiness, which is, I know, very obvious because these are empty areas of the map. I cheated to get out here, I used invincibility, and I turned off the HUD. It's weird to think that turning off the HUD is a cheat. That's sort of just something... Sort of just something I thought was funny when looking up cheats for this game. Anyway, yes. Empty areas that you're not supposed to go to. And that being said, let's take a look at some of these fringe areas. Right on the edge, in the peripheral, but never really meant to be looked at. First up, we got Polis Massa. This is a map. I can't say there's very much I find interesting about this map, other than if you go outside, you'll suffocate, which seems a little bit like the real world these days. Fortunately for video games, God gave us cheat codes, and the developers followed God's word. Anyway, you go ahead and enter invincibility, run outside and jump up here, and it's a straight line to a truly cosmic experience. Now, the stars and galaxy that wrap around the map are awesome on their own, but when you pair them with the flat, unending plane that stretches above and below them, then there's something to appreciate here. I feel like my character missed the last shuttle home, and now he's stuck here forever. Like I said in the beginning, all these areas are intentionally empty, and this area is no different. While I do get feelings of being stuck here forever. I don't get sad boy, lonely, I'm gonna do film photography to convey my feelings sort of vibes. I like to have my character stand here and have him and me just look at these low resolution stars. There's something I find really beautiful about it. It's simple, it's unintentional, it makes me miss seeing the stars like I used to in my hometown. Next map we got is Rinvar Harbor. This map I'm a big fan of, but I'm not here to talk about that. What I'm going to talk about is being a sad little droid all alone in the cold. If you take a joyride up one of these mountains, it leads you to a really breathtaking view down onto an icy valley. Breathtaking by 2005 graphic standards, which fortunately I like. Being in this valley and unable to see the end or the horizon does make me feel abandoned. Or it makes me feel like this little robot would feel abandoned, if robots feel. I'm not sure. Not what I'm here to talk about. You can also go up the mountains on the other side and find the usual infinite plane above blackness. Nothing too remarkable there. But I think that what makes this area feel so desolate and 
hopeless is the clouds and the chilly atmosphere. There's something a little somber about the idea of walking forever on snow and ice that really doesn't sit well with me. Then again, I've lived all my life in the desert, so this is the complete opposite of what I consider to be my natural environment. I wonder how much that affects how we perceive these feelings of loneliness and emptiness and abandon in games. If the world that we're exploring is something familiar or unfamiliar to us. I don't know. Um, you can go ahead and discuss that in the comments. Let me know what your ideal hellscape to be trapped in forever is. Hopefully it's not real life. Um, maybe after that we can map out our collective fears. But we gotta move on until then to what is my favorite and I think one of just the coolest and strangest areas in this video game. Now from the video clips at the beginning, you would have known that this was coming. Of course, it's Cloud City. Many people have said more poetic and poignant things about this map than I ever could. I also have to finish this video strong, and this is the map to do it when talking about emptiness and loneliness. The main playable area where you find yourself fighting is strange. If you told an alien what a human city was like, but never showed them one, they would make something like that. If you enter invincibility and fly over the walls, it's even stranger. It's, I don't know, it feels like bits of crumpled up paper that the writers threw away their old ideas on, just laying around. It's definitely feels abandoned, definitely, and I know, here's, here's the trigger word for you, definitely gives me backroom vibes, but I don't exactly feel creeped out like I do when it comes to liminal, other liminal spaces. Maybe it's the warm lighting. Maybe it's the beautiful 2005 graphics rendered on a modern console. I don't know, there's just something that's very 90s, dreamscape, I don't want to say retro-futurism, but some type of future. What's even stranger is when you walk to the edge of this outside map, you find that the whole city is on top of some sort of mesa. When I found this out like a month ago, I know people have found it out before me, but when I found this out, I was floored. Why would they do this? This makes no sense to me. Why would they have this whole empty plane? Why did they raise up the city so high? I don't know if it's to put you closer to the, the upper limit of the skybox so you can't fly up forever. I, I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know why they did it. But it is still, like, awesome. If you stand out here and just look at it, it's something out of a dream. If you go even further, there's something more, something beyond all this. I don't know what this giant obelisk of terrain is doing here, and I think knowing would ruin it for me. But all of these maps, when you get outside the playable area, there's nothing. And to find this, just some mistake left here by a developer or a programmer, this is what it's all about, baby. This is, this is why we play video games. Finding this out here in my late 20s left me with a sense of wonder that I hadn't felt since I was a kid playing video games for the first time. Sure, a lot of this feeling is nostalgia and it is also me projecting something onto the game, but as the kind of person who likes to find unfinished parts of maps, to find evidence that someone made this, then this is 
really as good as it gets. So that's it for today. There are lots of really beautiful and cool places outside the maps. In this game and in plenty of other games, I came nowhere near close to showing them all. I just thought it would be fun to show you the ones that I find remarkable. I'd like to hear about the ones that you remember and think about often. Companies obviously re-release games to cash in on our nostalgia. And we buy them because, yes, we have fun playing them and we'd like to relive that. But things like this that are the unique moments that we each create, that's not something that they can sell to us. These are the things that we bring to the game. I think too often modern games try and cover up what might be mistakes. They think it's something you're not meant to see simply because it's an area they haven't programmed something for you to do in. But you don't always have to program in every area for people to find something beautiful and remarkable about it. All right, that's enough of my you are all alone with your nostalgia video for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know.